Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass. Thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, I got to show you some of the amazing things that the atmosphere provided over the last uh, several days here. I'm going to take you first to the radar that's just outside of Minneapolis, St. Paul last week, at the end of last week, as we were dealing with that massive blizzard. This is a radar image where the color coding is showing you the type of precipitation. And I was just, well, I was amazed. I don't think I've ever seen this before. We had some cells, some, some storm cells moving through parts of central Minnesota that were producing radar reflectivity values greater than 60 dBZ. That means we had snow falling, which is why it's blue. We had lightning and thunder in this because the storm cells were convective. In other words, they were thunderstorm-like. And we had some mixed-in hail. So this was on the end of that huge blizzard that hit the middle part of the country. Speaking of that blizzard, look at how much water we've got right now if we were to melt all the snow sitting in parts of Nebraska and uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. That's right, we have in through this area an additional one to in some locations up to three inches of liquid equivalent. Now as this snow came in, remember it fell on ground that was above freezing. The topsoil was above freezing here, which means that some of it's already soaked in and as this melts, this is going to continue to cause flooding problems on our major river systems in the middle part of the country. Uh, so this was just, just the tail end of last week. On Saturday, this massive low pressure system emerged out of Texas and it brought in an enormous amount of severe weather from eastern Texas to Louisiana over toward Mississippi. And then we'll talk about what happened on Sunday here. But I want to just show you some neat stuff you can see on satellite. Look at the moisture feed. See those cloud streets there? That is when what the atmosphere looks like as it just brings in enormous quantities of moisture to fuel these storms. And stormy it was. On Saturday the 13th, 220 total severe weather reports, including 22 reports of tornadoes. Uh, today on Monday, we'll be getting some of the ratings, the EF scale ratings from these tornadoes, but they were nasty. And if you didn't get a tornado, you ended up having strong straight line winds and some pretty large hail. That same system moved on Sunday up to the East Coast, adding another 309 reports of severe weather, much of these coming in the way uh, of hail, I'm sorry, of wind, of wind damage. That's the blue dots here. But there was a lot of hail and three additional reports of tornadoes, including uh, in Ohio, we had tornadoes. This was an active, active weekend. Add to that, there was half a million lightning strikes out of this system, and that blanketed a large section of the United States. But I want to tip my cap not only to the Storm Prediction Center and the National Weather Service, who did a phenomenal job forecasting this, but also want to tip my cap here to the forecasters who worked with the PGA. There it is. That's Augusta. And I grabbed a snapshot of the radar when Tiger sunk his winning putt. So they started this tournament early on Sunday because the forecast did a phenomenal job at picking up on when and where that rain was coming through. And we should be glad this did not go into, uh, you know, into extra holes here because we had some lightning embedded in this and it would have shut things down. Weather played a huge role in that tournament, I'll tell you that much. Well, as we got into the day on Sunday, our large cyclone is now spinning off toward the East Coast. And this is just a rapid animation here of our visible satellite, Ghost 16. I want to pause it right about there. Now look at this. You can see the snow still on the ground in parts of the North Central Plains. What you can't see is the snow that fell on the back side of this system. That's right, through parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Michigan, right in the area, even including southern Wisconsin, we brought in in some locations an additional three to five. In some places up here, just west of Chicago, we even saw places getting well over six inches of snowfall. It was a wet and slushy snow that came into this area, but for a lot of us, it's pretty rare, it feels like, to get snow mid-April quite like this. So, take a deep breath here and try to see what's coming. What's coming is we're adding precipitation to where it's already been wet. This is just your last 72 hours of total accumulated precipitation. And this area, by the middle of this week where I just put that circle, is about to get lit up again. So some places that already got three to six inches of rainfall, I'm talking about this region in the lower Mississippi River Valley, about to get a whole lot more. And as these next couple of systems come through, we're going to be putting down moisture on top of moisture. Some parts of the north central plains where we're melting snow already have an additional three to four inches of, addition, of additional moisture, additional inches of liquid water in the soil. Outside of that, there's a widespread area here that has an additional inch to two inches. And we're about to put down so much more. This is just looking out through the next 
seven days, getting all its next Monday morning. And I'm going to show you something. We're watching a big system middle of the week that's going to help to bring in all this precipitation in the north central plains. Well, really in the Midwest, I should say, in the Great Lakes states. But then do you see the stripes in here? in the forecast precipitation totals. This is the European model showing you that what's coming through parts of Texas, parts of the Mid-South, parts of the lower Mississippi getting all the way to the Southeast is going to be some nasty weather. And where does it all start? It starts in Northern California. It starts in co uh, coastal Oregon, Washington, and then gets into the Rocky Mountains and dives south, causing problems. I do have some good news, if you want to think about this as good news. This map over here, probability of picking up an inch of snow through the next seven days. And what do we see here? We don't see the European model, or actually any other global model either, suggesting that these next two systems coming through are going to be putting down major snow. But the only place I do see it here is in this part of Michigan and right up here in parts of, um, in parts of northern Wisconsin. Some of what you see in Michigan right here is the current system still leaving because this was a model run that was done 0Z on, on, on Monday morning. So that was quite a while ago, uh, but that's the latest run we have. Uh, people in northern Wisconsin, though, may not be too upset about this. They're just not yet probably ready to put away their snowmobiles in the north woods but what do we not see across our major ag producing regions adding more snow to what we've already got in fact we're gonna be melting that snow all right wednesday thursday friday we're locked and loaded on a powerful low pressure system this is valid on wednesday storm prediction centers already in, uh, issued an enhanced risk here with their slight risk getting deep into the corn belt thursday Friday. This sucker is moving east and causing problems. Severe weather and heavy rainfall is our problem this week. Now what's causing all of this? Well let's just start at the upper levels and we'll get down to the details of this system. As I click play, here's the deeper trough. See it sitting there over parts uh, of the eastern Great Lakes? That's the deep trough moving out. Cold air behind it. But the real thing we need to watch is what's coming into coastal Oregon and Washington. See that trough there? That one sweeps through the Intermountain West and dives right down into Texas. Now out ahead of that, look at the ridge that builds from Texas all the way into the Northern Plains. This resurgence of warmth that brings 70 degree temperatures deep into the Corn Belt. But waiting in the wings is this system right here. It sweeps through Texas. And as it does so, this is a powerfully deep low pressure system drawing a lot of moisture out ahead of it. And it is going to plow right through the eastern Corn Belt, bringing in cold air behind it and a lot of severe weather out ahead of it. But beyond this, I want to turn our attention now to Alaska and Greenland. What's happening over Alaska? A trough is developing. See that? Now, our general rule of thumb, we've talked about this for quite some time, is that when we get troughing over Alaska, that tends to give us a strong jet stream right in through here because there's ridging here and troughing there. And that tends to give much of the lower 48 a break from cold weather as we transition into spring. Also, it said Greenland. Greenland, we've lost our big ridge. We've now moved things off. Things are, are changed across Greenland. And what we have to still look out for are little short waves flowing through the flow here, moving through the flow, I should say, like the one I kind of pinned here, because it's going to sweep through and bring us more rounds of severe weather because anytime we get ridging in this area that just pumps in that moisture. So the pattern's not getting away from this active thunderstorm type pattern. What it's getting away from are the deep troughs that come through and send our temperatures well below average like we saw in the day on Sunday across much of the country. Now watch as I play forward. What do you see? You don't see the deeper troughs. What do you see? A bit more of a warmer pattern that's emerging. But remember, it's not been the temperatures keeping us out of our fields this year. It's been the excessive rainfall. So we better talk about that. So as we progress through this forecast, we saw late night last night moving through parts of the uh, lower Michigan here. That was the snow we talked about. The rest of this uh, overnight hours, very stormy across the, much of the eastern side of the country. You can see it there. All right, that's now out of the way. This is 7 a.m. Stopped it right here at 7 a.m. What are we watching? There's going to be a boundary here. We're going to watch a system come on shore here out in Northern California. So right on that boundary, some light rain and the system coming into Northern California. Well, let's watch it. There it hits. See here, coastal Oregon, Washington, and really coastal Oregon and Northern California getting some precip out of this. Meanwhile, look what's moving through the North Central Plains, some lighter precip moving through Northern uh, Minnesota. But you're going to see the evidence. There it is. There's that boundary setting up from um, Lake Michigan through Iowa, through the border of Nebraska and South Dakota. And that will be the boundary on which our next warm front starts to build north. Watch. 
See the system moves through California, maybe even bring some precipitation to the Central Valley here. Well, let me get you out to early Tuesday morning. That system's now really going across the Intermountain West where there's a ton of snow. The snowpack is phenomenal right now in the Intermountain West. And it emerges after bringing some precip there uh, to parts of uh, Michigan into the Eastern Great Lakes. We'll look back West. It emerges Montana precip, Four Corner States precip, there's the warm frontal boundary, 3 a.m. on Wednesday, and that is just the beginning. What is it the beginning of? This. I'm going to take you out here, pause it right there, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. Now, what do we have? Ridge pumping in the moisture, destabilizing the atmosphere. Around this large low pressure system, very windy conditions, but abundant moisture, abundant heat, and watch how the atmosphere responds. Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, into Thursday morning. Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, parts of Kansas, Texas, Louisiana. Now, the lower Mississippi River Valley, getting up into the Ohio River Valley. This system goes. And you can see here why the Storm Prediction Center, several days in advance, is worried about this area on Wednesday, this area on Thursday, and then Friday right up the East Coast. By the way, here's that little bit of snow possibly falling in parts of north central Wisconsin, up there near like Rhineland or Minocqua, that area. So this is now Friday morning, getting into Saturday, and that's our next big system. Now from here on out, I'm going to play this quickly because we don't have a lot of details on the next system coming through the middle part of the country. But by next Monday morning, current model runs are projecting another system. And you're going to see that things just don't slow down as they get you all the way out to the end of next week. That's a 10-day forecast. So while the pattern moderates in temperatures, it doesn't moderate in terms of precipitation. You can even see when we look out here to week two that we tend to keep this area wetter than average. And so our problems with rainfall this season continue as we move forward. What do our temperatures do? Let's play this out. Starting off on Monday morning, a lot of cold air behind the system that just went through over the weekend. But you're going to see moderation Tuesday into Wednesday in the middle section of the country. Why it's cool out west? That next trough digs in. See it there? Warmth out ahead of it. But by the time we get into Wednesday night, this is where very active severe weather moves into this part of the country with that warm, moist, unstable air. And then some colder air comes in behind the system as it moves up the East Coast. So it's certainly a warm day here on the East Coast as we get into Friday. But look on the backside. Cooler air sneaks in. But the pattern's unblocked. That gets out. It's going to mean a, a pretty cool start to our Easter weekend for the middle part of the country. But then we're going to resurge in temperatures by the time Easter Sunday gets here. And about the only cool place in the country will probably just be the East Coast. While warmth returns to the middle part of the United States. After that, look, I'll just play this quickly. It's what we don't see. We don't see the model picking up on large, cold biases moving forward. And that's an important pattern flip that we're going to start sometime around the 23rd, 24th of this month. Unfortunately, it looks as though we continue to stay active with our thunderstorm activity. What am I watching longer term? Well, I'm certainly going to give an update of this on Wednesday. Some important things that have changed are right here. One, this feature here just East, or sorry, west of Alaska, east of Russia. Building in a ridge here sets up our wave train pattern such that we have a trough that develops over Alaska, general ridging across much of the lower 48, and a trough that ends up developing north of the Hudson, west of Greenland that extends and connects with a trough that's sitting here just on the edge of Europe. Now, this is going to be bringing in some adverse weather. Certainly very warm days in this section of, the, of, of Europe before this trough sweeps through. But as this one comes through, it could certainly cause some problems as we get out here uh, in kind of our third week of April. But overall, if we want to see a return of warmth into the middle part of the country, it is going to have to start right here with the pattern getting set up here in the northwestern Pacific Ocean. Okay, as we wrap this one up, let's just take a quick global look at things here. I got on the top this is the 2019 April 8th. So this was uh, last week. We get a brand new update of this later on today on Monday. But uh, here, this is April 8th, Vegetative Health Index. The closer you get to these colors, the healthier the vegetation. This was a year ago, 2018 on the bottom. Now look at the difference. Notice we weren't even picking up uh, vegetative signatures 
north of that line I just drew because it was so cold last April. Well, this year, look at this. We've got it way up here into parts of Canada. But we've talked a lot about the United States. I want to kind of focus here on what's going on in parts of South America uh, especially and also take a look at the differences over here in parts of Europe uh, and even in India as well. And the best way to do that is to take a look at this map. This is the year-on-year -year change. Now, what do we see? These colors, which I just circled there in Brazil, suggest that this year, at this time of year, the vegetative health index is looking better than it did a year ago. And that is why our safrina crop right in through this area uh, is actually putting in some huge numbers. Just get some, got, got some updates here from Conab. Remember last year we were dealing with drought? Well, certainly we're seeing a huge change in Argentina in terms of our vegetative health index. But let me take you over to Europe. You can see here that compared to a year ago, that mild but drier winter we had in much of Eastern Europe is right now got things looking a little different than they did a year ago. We're on this side of the color spectrum. And also want to point out, look at India as well. Uh, it's kind of surprising just to see the, the, how much better things do look as you get up into North Central India uh, as we uh, kind of finish out this video here. Take a minute, pause it, take a closer look if you want. But uh, as we finish up this video, I just want to say one thing. If you're in the central United States, get ready. Please be prepared. The atmosphere has reloaded and it's going to be causing some problems. Uh, so don't please don't forget that part of this forecast video. Let's wrap it up right there, though. We at Nutrient Act Solutions hope you look forward to our ag forecast. It's coming out this week. We release content every day on my.nutrientactsolutions.com. I hope you all have a great week and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.